minus 20 seconds. Let's just keep honest people honest. Marie Teresa. Daddy is RV. Elena Sandovici. Lauren Luna. Rodney D. Butler. Hugo Perez. Amy Cummins. Flux the artist. Lex Simone. Brandy Unz. Amy Malkin. Jean Barron. Teresa L. Staley. And Monique LaRue. So the next artist I met was one that I totally stand on that I reached out to on Instagram. She was an African-American artist and she did these incredible skyline paintings. And there's something that I just really love about seeing the skyline. Um, to me, they're magical. It's people who came together with different styles of art, different architecture, architects that came together and decided to put something together that created this big, beautiful city. Now she has her whole studio space here at Sawyer Yards inside the silos. Hi, I'm Lauren Luna, and this is my home studio. And that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> what do you like about it, the Houston art scene? Well, when I decided to move here in 2011, I did a lot of research on trying to find the appropriate place for me to relocate. Um, I had come from New York City back to my hometown of Columbus, Ohio, and it's kind of hard to go backwards after going so huge in New York. And um, so I just had to kind of pause for a moment while my son grew. But the, the art scene, people have that, uh, they have that income because of oil and gas and you have the, the extra money for luxury, which art is considered a luxury. And um, they have that money to spend and this was the perfect place for that. The economy was strong enough to support an artist because, and with all the cultures that are here in Houston, people have that, that need for that much more culture, which also is an art. So, the very first show I ever uh, participated in in Houston was actually the H-Town Sneaker Summit of 2011. Um, I had met a bunch of sneaker customizers right before I had moved um, in Ohio, and then I, we all connected again at the H-Town Sneaker Summit because at the time I was customizing sneakers as well. And I had a line of, of scantily clad girls in sneakers and it was called custom ladies and so you know trying any by any means necessary I was gonna be painting I didn't care what it was um, <laughs> and I figured that I could appease to the the sneaker population by having these half-naked women and sometimes naked women in my sneakers that was my my idea but at the time nobody really uses calendars so you know Whatever. Um, yeah, so um, that was the first official, official show. Uh, after that, I, I think it, it's a toss up between First Saturday Art Market and Midtown Art in the Park. I can't remember which one was next, but they definitely were both that same year. Um, and and the, the couple story that I was telling you about, that was from uh, Midtown Art in the Park. Um, and I still run into them every once in a while too, and it's so fun to see them. And they're just like, oh, you know, we're so proud of you and, and how much you've grown. And, and actually, 
uh, there was a, a man that I met at First Saturday Art Market. And when he met me, I told him that I had moved to Houston to be an artist. And he, he'll tell this story too. He'll say, you know, I thought you were crazy. And he was like, and now look at you. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I knew what I wanted. I've known what I wanted to do from at least the age of eight. And everything that I've done in my life has been to reach the goal of honestly where I am right now. I am a professional artist whose income comes from art. And that's exactly what I've wanted to do my entire life. So how do you feel about being an artist during COVID-19? Um, in this in the current events of 2020? Well, I just recently gave up the day job back in October. Um, I felt that with my momentum that I was having uh, with the shows and gigs and commissions that it was actually time to do so. And I felt that it was, it, it was prime time and everything was looking so promising and we had the studio, we had festivals, we had commissions coming in, um, all kinds of gigs that were happening. And I, I was booked all the way through the end of December. In January, of course, everything always kind of uh, falls away. And, but then it starts to ramp back up come February. February happened, had first Saturday art market, and then COVID hit. Bayou City Arts Festival was canceled. Midtown Art in the Park was canceled. And that right there is about 30% of my yearly income with those festivals right there. So um, after I kind of uh, <laughs> had a slight breakdown, then I decided to pull my shit back together again and remember who I was and said, you need to reevaluate the situation. And it's not about, I'm Lauren Luna, your city painter. It's about, you have been through some tough shit in your life, pull it together, and what are you gonna do about this? And that's when I started thinking of the fact that I had all of these items for face-to-face uh, -face painting parties. And I said, well, people are gonna be bored at home. Why don't I start to package them up and send them out. And that's exactly what I did. And they did really, really well at first. <laughs> but then the world started to open up and then sales slowed to a nothing. Overall, it has been very challenging just because of the current state of the world right now, honestly. Um, you kind of are at a crossroads. You don't know exactly how far you want to get into having or voicing your opinion because everybody has an opinion, but how far do you want to go into voicing your opinion at the risk of losing clients, at the risk of losing yourself, at the risk of, of everything? I think that Artists kind of have a little bit of leeway because we're artists and we're expected to have opinions and we're expected to maybe sometimes go against the grain. But you have to still think about at the end of the day, how much is that going to be a risk of how much business that's going to cost you? Because this is my profession. This is my job. This is how I make money. How much is that going to be affected? While filming with Lauren, I got to learn so much about her. It was really cool. I actually got to watch her work on a oil painting live in her personal residence studio. I got to see some of her artwork being done live again at her studio in the silos. And I found out that she likes gardening and even has a little bit of her own art out in her garden. Just because it doesn't directly affect you 
doesn't mean that it doesn't exist or it's not a problem. And I feel that if more people stepped outside of their shoes to understand something from a different point of view, maybe, just maybe, there'd be a little bit of an alleviation on some of our problems. Right, so what do you feel like we need less of in this time? Political polarization. Period. Okay. You said, period, so that you said what you said. How do you feel that your art, Lauren Luna, your city painter, impacts the Houston community? Obviously, it's about Houston, but tell, tell us like a little bit more, like how do you feel your art impacts? So, the Houston skyline is changing on a daily basis, and I mean that literally with all this construction. What I paint today is a snapshot of what the city looks like right now. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, tomorrow, the city is going to look completely different. So this is a visual documentation of what the city looks like. So what is the Laura and Luna message to the world? So I think there's more than one message. Being that I have uh, an extensive art background, I got super excited when I started learning about minority artists and black artists during the Harlem Renaissance. There weren't very many other than that that were learned about in throughout all of my years in college. And that has been um, something I've been trying to change. Um, locally and actually at my old school, uh, where Kent State. Um, I had a, a very long, lengthy conversation with uh, the art director of the School of Art there to try to see if we can change numbers. So, I mean, maybe that's my legacy, maybe it's not. Um, but I just want to see more uh, artists of color being able to reach their full potential. About a year or so after I met Lauren, she invited me to be a part of an art show she was having called the Dream Scholarship Art Show, downtown Houston at Bai Sun Gallery back in 2019, early 2019. Her skylines inspired me to do my own mixed media rendition of a Houston skyline. That night it sold over its opening bid price and it was a really successful and fun event. Also that night, I met another artist, one that had such a wide range of mediums and skills that I didn't know about until I befriended him. He introduced himself that night, and we've been friends ever since. I can't wait for you guys to meet this next Houston artist. <laughs>